Hello, everybody. This is Peter Joseph, and welcome to the April 20th, 2011 Zeitgeist Movement Global Radio Show. We do this broadcast every week, and we have rotating lecturers and coordinators from all Zeitgeist Movement chapters coming in to help with this. This is our new platform to give uh, more voices to our movement and, of course, different angles and perspectives. And also to show that this movement is a leaderless movement. It's about people working together. It's not about anyone imposing their interests on anyone else and overshadowing them. Which leads me to a very important update, which I've had to displace Federico, unfortunately, who is supposed to be doing this particular talk this Wednesday. And uh, he'll be back next week, though, to continue that. But uh, due to recent events with the Venus Project, it's important that I speak, uh, of course, about these issues, which I think many listening to this broadcast are probably already aware of, unless it's archived. And that's the fact that the Venus Project has decided to disband, to disassociate themselves from the Zeitgeist Movement for a number of reasons, um, interesting reasons, which I'm going to go through uh, in a little while. But I think the best approach to this is for me to give kind of a historical view of how all of this came to be so the proper context is put together here. The first thing I'd like to begin with is a little treatment on myself. Uh, I don't particularly like to talk about myself. I have, throughout time, since the beginning of the Zeitgeist phenomenon, tried to restrict my exposure, and it's not for any secretive reasons. It was simply from the standpoint of I don't like being the forefront of anything. It's not in my character and my upbringing for that type of role. I'm a very introverted, but we all grow and adapt, and I, as a musician, I isolated myself in music rooms in a highly narcissistic way uh, for years and years. Uh, I moved to New York. I began to work in advertising because getting music jobs uh, is very difficult in New York City, especially for someone aspiring to be a solo classical marimbas, which was my particular interest. And got out of that conservatory due to debt reasons and decided to, well, not decided, I was forced into uh, these kind of base uh, careers that I don't particularly care for, but I did excel at. Um, before Zeitgeist 1 came out, I was in the upper 10 percentile as far as income. I easily could go back to making 100 to $200,000 a year with horrible advertising jobs or my work previously in the stock market, which I don't, so I don't talk about very frequently because I'm not particularly proud of it, but then again, I'm not particularly ashamed of it either. It's all a matter of what we all have to do in an economic system to survive. As a catharsis in 2007, I decided to make literally a thrown-together art piece that was shown in Lower Manhattan called Zeitgeist. It was thrown up on the Internet after it was over with no interest for any progress of it. I was simply resorting back to my normal life, and it became very popular, and it sort of took a life of its own. And suddenly the question became, what do we do about many of these social issues that were brought up in Zeitgeist? What do we do about a world that is very unstable, about a lot of things that I won't go into if you're familiar with that work? And I started to look around with this newfound sort of pressure because of this new audience that, to my sort of uncomfort, discomfort, uh, was paying attention to me, which is why originally I was Peter J. and then suddenly became Peter Joseph. And now I've stuck with that because that's what I became known as, even though that isn't my last name. I scoured around, and William Gazecki, who liked my first film, sent me a DVD called Future by Design, the biography of Jacques Fresco. I watched it. I was very impressed by it. I contacted them uh, through Gazecki. I went to visit and did an interview with Jacques, read his book, and was just astounded at how incredible this man was and what his ideas were and how effective and important uh, they would be if we could just create a system that was able to put them into practice. Then was born Zeitgeist Addendum after, after these interviews and Zeitgeist Addendum, uh, I won't go into the explanation of it. Essentially, though, it sparked this experiment, which was the Zeitgeist Movement. Now, a lot of people ask, why wasn't the Zeitgeist Movement the Venus Project Movement? I, from a sp standpoint of strategy in this experiment, I knew the millions of people that were interested in this sort of Zeitgeist phenomenon, which took on a life of its own. So to call it the Venus Project Movement, because it's an organization that wasn't known at all, coming out of the Zeitgeist film series seemed obtuse to me. And it wasn't that there was an overriding issue. It wasn't that there was ever an issue to override anything that the Venus Project was interested in. It was simply a matter of strategy and as also an experiment, too. I wasn't sure what would come from it. 
But amazingly enough, uh, just a number of months later in New York City, we had our first official Zeitgeist Day. There actually was one in 2008 early in the year, but that wasn't related to anything except just the movie. And I, I just sent out tons of free DVDs to people if they wanted to show it in their communities. That was the original Zeitgeist Day, but I don't consider that really to be an effective one because it didn't have a particular purpose. It was just more expression uh, for awareness uh, without necessarily a goal. And that was the beauty of the Venus Project is there was a goal. And in New York, we sold out this huge uh, arena of 1,000 people. It was covered by the New York Times. Incredible to me that uh, this short period of time, such interest was driven to this. and It was incredibly hopeful. And I was really happy to see Jacques and Roxanne get the attention that they deserved with this advent. And after Zeitgeist Addendum was all about working on the movement. And we culminated coordination. We got chapters. We currently have roughly 1,000 to 1,100 chapters across the world. Uh, roughly half a million people, though I think there's more than that because we only track people that come to our global site. Uh, we've had Zeitgeist Day now for three years in a row, official Zeitgeist Days. All of them in the West have sold out venues, almost almost all of them. Uh, and you know, it's incredible what's been happening as a global a global institution. And across this entire point, uh, the Venus Project and the, and Jacques Fresco were always put on the pedestal. That's what the Zeitgeist Movement was. Now, when I met Jacques, and I'm going to digress a second, um, he really turned me around in many, many, many important ways, ways that I'm deeply, uh, deeply accredited to him, deeply accredit to him and thankful for him. And one of those was the fact that in my time, I was obsessed with people. Oh, there's all these groups that are doing bad things. We've got to shut down Monsanto. We've got to shut down the Federal Reserve. We have to shut down these institutions. And Jacques pointed out the very real reality that it's not the people. It's the system. The people are products of this environment. Uh, we can argue genetics all day, but the specifics are really easy to see when the reinforcing attributes of our social system are taken into account. And the people are just like trees. Um, if they flourish in a very rich environment with good light and it's healthy, then they do well and it's a balanced organism. If they flourish in poor soil with bad sh shadowing, with uh, bad environmental effects, a very wilted tree might emerge or a distorted tree or an unhealthy organism. And there really is no difference between a human being and a tree on that basic fundamental symbiotic level. And this was an astounding realization to me because I had a lot of things wrong in my sense of activism. He also taught me that knowledge is serially developed. Serially developed. He introduced me to the Newton quote, Newton quote, excuse me, that I can paraphrase because I don't have it in front of me, that I've done what I've done because I've stood on the shoulders of giants, building upon information. Did Newton invent gravity? Or did he discover it through a rigorous process of scientific analysis that had been set in motion by many others long before him? He also taught me that the lowest common denominator of any particular phenomenon is where you have to go. You have to get to the point of origin, if you will. You have to move past the, the signatures, the signposts, all the symptoms, all the manifestations of things, and get to the closest to the core of anything that you possibly can. Root causes, for example. So if you want to defend against crime, you don't just keep throwing people in prison because that doesn't do anything. You have to get to the root cause of why they're motivated to do the crime to begin, begin with, etc. Many, many wonderful things that uh, people around the world that visit Jacques continue to learn about, and it's extremely uh, important information. But let it be known based on the prior comment that Jock isn't necessarily the originator of anything. And one of the greatest things he told me as well is that, you know, I'm a manifestation of this. Now, he is the inventor of the Venus Project, if you will, the inventor of a concept of a resource-based economy. He could say that. But in his own rhetoric, he's, he knows that no one really invents anything, which I find fascinating because if he was willing to recognize that this culmination of ideas is serial, I'm not quite sure why, and this will lead to my discussion of their objections to the Venus, excuse me, to the Zeitgeist movement, why they've chosen to kind of shut down any third-party relationships, or at least their relationship with the Zeitgeist movement, considering that the Zeitgeist movement has done nothing but promote everything that Josh talked about. There's no direction in the Zeitgeist movement. 
the direction of the Zeitgeist Movement is simply to orient people and to get them focused in a particular direction for social change. And I think we've done a very good job of that. And I apologize if I'm jumping around a bit. I'll organize myself a little bit more in a second. But I want to talk about now, given this historical context, what the Zeitgeist Movement has actually done. As I mentioned, over a thousand chapters across the world, amazingly successful global simultaneous event days, very positive news coverage, a growing awareness of this, the very fact that any mainstream media has taken the time to consider the idea of a moneyless economy uh, is incredible to me because most reactions would be just to laugh at you. And it's slowly coming into the, well, the cultural zeitgeist, if you will, these possibilities that many probably have never thought about before. We have the Zeitgeist Media Festival coming up, which was an extension of the Z-Day event, which I want to uh, plug, of course. The dates for this is between September 9th and the 11th, basically the weekend of the 9th to the 11th. And that's where we want to get this unfolding. Uh, we're going to be doing it on the Sunday in Los Angeles. There's a lot of celebrity interest. The point of this event is to make it popular, make it stylistic, to want to not be so self-centered. We're coming out of a severe distortion in human development where if you go back to the 90s, everyone's talking about bling and, and the, the value of money and the value of, of materialism as though these, these attributes really contribute to quality of life. A sad byproduct, obviously, of the monetary system uh, and its need for constant consumption, perpetuation, and advertising, but I won't go on that. And we need to get a new world going where people actually identify with helping each other as opposed to try and taking and screwing each other over. A world where people find it uh, rewarding to give, not receive. And that's what the Zeitgeist Media Project in its manifestation, which will occur globally just like Z-Day, um, is going to hopefully try and accomplish. And all it takes is a few celebrities to come forward with this. And uh, it could be quite amazing, the effect, and it could grow substantially. Now, I've sidetracked a bit, but I, the reason I bring that up is because what the point of the movement is, and this brings me to the criticisms of the Venus Project, the point of the movement is simply to spread information. And my role has been simply to assist in how that information is spread, and nothing more. In a meeting that took place on Monday, um, uh, April the 18th, Roxanne Meadows came into a TeamSpeak meeting with us, many coordinators, or many, many people there, uh, naturally, because they were concerned about the issue. And this is where she announced that there was going to be a disbanding of the two organizations. And there was no conversation about this. And everyone, of course, asked the reason for this. And one reason that was brought up was that, that it's Peter's direction, evidently, and not Jacques, which took me back to think, what direction are they actually referring to? At no point is there anything in our materials that has been objectionable to them who have read everything. Uh, is the direction that they, she refers to that's not being followed the direction of what a resource-based economy is, of all the sociological factors of information, excuse me, uh, that need to be pointed out as information so you know people can digest it and begin to see the merit of this new institution? Or is the direction that apparently I'm taking charge of uh, the direction of what people do in relationship to the Venus Project. And what I mean by that is that there's no objection to the direction that we've been promoting because the Zeitgeist Movement has no direction. The only objection I see is with regard to whatever interests the Venus Project have in a temporal sense. For instance, the movie that was that is talked about by the main, major mo movie that would cost millions of dollars. I, as a filmmaker had to very gently object to their interest in donations from the community. Originally, I, I said, okay, that's fine, but I thought there'd be a little more conversation about it. And then it just kind of came out of nowhere, boom, we're, we're seeking donations for this major film. I said, okay, I really am not particularly happy considering the movement was based on trying to get money out of the way, have it based on time and not income. We never had a donation base for anything. In fact, the first thing I recommended, because uh, it, it was brought up in New York, the Jacques has difficulty hearing. He has hearing aids that go well. They're provided, you know, by uh, basically through his insurance, and they're not they're not up to date. They're not high tech. I say, you know, we should get a fundraiser together to give get Jacques some new hearing aids. You know, I got you know, maybe ten grand or something to get really good hearing aids. 
And uh, that's what, that was. I, I was hoping that would be a great little project and a great kind of sign of respect, of course, to Jacques. That didn't manifest, even though it was brought up. Um, and instead, it jumped straight to this huge, huge project of multi-million dollar film project, which, yes, they've been talking about for a long time, but I don't see the merit in it in the short term because of the extreme cost and the, really the need to get other people that work in the industry, that understand what it means to make a major motion picture, get them in part of this so a really serious understanding of what's really ahead of them can be made. I had connections to Ridley Scott. I was working on making a, a deliberate package that would move amongst the higher-ups of people I knew in Los Angeles. Um, and unfortunately, all that got, of course, shot in the foot with this sort of insolent disbanding. And I just don't want to reiterate the fact that all I've done is navigate people's interests within the movement. If you can find any example of me where I'm suddenly acting like Jacques and inventing my own direction as far as the social system, I'd like to see that. I don't think I've done that. I can't even think of a moment that I haven't religiously sourced Jacques and everything that I've done. So that was an initial grievance, which was questioned. And no answer was made as to what the supposed flaw in the, quote, direction was. And that's very unfortunate. The second grievance that came up was that the Zeitgeist movement isn't educated enough about the direction to be able to promote it. Now, that's a very broad statement because it's basically qualifying thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. And if that is the case, well, whose fault is that? Uh, we've done nothing but try to absorb as much information as possible. Uh, Jock's book, the PDF, the videos that have been made, all with approval of the, Z of the Venus Project. If it, why is something missing? What exactly is the mystery? And I, I wasn't quite sure. And when that question was posed as well to Roxanne, nothing was stated with respect to that. So I could go through a number of other things that are brought up here, and I'm trying to avoid all the attacks on me if someone has a problem with me, well, tell me what it actually is. I met Jock and Roxanne in January, plenty of time to bring up anything that they wanted to bring up, and nothing was brought up. Everything seemed fine. So within the, the scope of, well, considering when Jock's initial video came out, which was very kind of insulting to everyone, it's been only a number of weeks. So the question is, what happened during that period of time? Because nothing was brought up to me. And if, if they have a problem, why don't they bring it up? If the direction isn't correct, tell us what the right direction is. None of these questions have been answered. What has been answered and where the truth really lies with this is very simple. Number one, my voiced opposition, which was very subtle, by the way, yet in support, I just simply didn't want to expose the community to donations for something that might not manifest for their movie. My voiced opposition for their movie rubbed them the wrong way because I'm not blindly going along with every commercial interest they want. Now, please note, on the Zeitgeist Movement site, we have for three years promoted donations to the Venus Project without question. I've never questioned them about how much money they've gotten or what they're doing with it or anything. It's just not my business and I trust them. And when this came up, it was a multiple slap in the face because first of all, if you want to know my justification, A, the whole movement was based not on this, as I described earlier. B, putting all your eggs in one basket with wanting millions of dollars for a movie in the current climate is irrational. Uh, as a filmmaker, knowing the Zeitgeist film series is as popular as it is, do they think they're going to trump that? In the sense of, unless they have a huge multi-million dollar foundation with a real big time director and about 20 million just for promotion alone, which is the average cost for for major motion pictures, they have to promote the film. They can't just expect the community to magically pick it up. That's something that only Zeitgeist has been able to accomplish, that the community chooses to try and promote the ideas. The release of Zeitgeist moving forward was a community effort. Uh, I lost tons and tons of money on all of that. And fortunately, though, the money that was generated by different chapters, they were able to utilize that for Z-Day, which at the end of the day was the entire point. I have no sour grapes about it. The movie was a problem. The movie that was supposed to be used eventually is going to be used, apparently, to fund the city system. Now, I will leave it to all of you to do the math probabilistically about the odds of them making a huge movie, spending exorbitant amounts of money, probably, most likely, and then selling that movie to the public, making 
enough profit, billions of dollars perhaps, to move into a city system? It would be different if the film was relatively cheap and not as high budget as their expectations are. I could easily see that, but I find it a little bit improbable. If I had millions of dollars, if millions of dollars was ever generated, there are all sorts of technical things, very critical technical things that could be brought out for public display. Uh, teams, interdisciplinary teams could be hired to take on certain goals. And that's the way I'd see that money be more productively spent. Another temporal film that goes in one ear and right out the other in this short attention span culture in a world where million, hundred million dollar films are made constantly and very most very few of them make you know legitimate profit or, and like stepped over the long course of time. So you know we could rebuild Warden Cliff Tower. We could do all sorts of engineering attributes. We could more funding on ideas such as Wolfram Alpha getting engineers and programmers to build the central database, or at least elements of it that could be shown to the world to show how decision-making processes can be arrived at through AI to remove human opinion. Many, many things. Instead, let's just make another movie. So I hope everyone understands that, and I, I still support their movie, and I wish they hadn't burnt that bridge because I probably could have helped them. I just didn't want the community to feel like this was something that they were obligated to spend money on because, frankly, the end goal of it uh, is, again, highly improbable. The next issue has to do with myself and apparently the fact that, according to Roxanne, I think I know more than Jacques, which has got to be one of the most erroneous things I've ever heard, nor have I ever claimed such a thing. I don't know shit. I am simply trying to gather information and funnel it out as the as the sponge that I am and that's all that's all any of us really are in the end uh, no point <laughs> the absurdity of that accusation is really there for the provocative nature of it so they have an easier way to to justify what they are choosing to put out there which is really complete bullshit because I get in, in a forefront position because I've stuck my neck out for so long because I take the abuse of everybody because I'm the one that has tried my best selflessly going out uh, with no monetary gain, with a battered ego, with all the abuse that comes forward for being in any pivotal position. Because I've chosen that perseverance, suddenly my popularity is now a threat to apparently Jacques, I guess. And now because people reference me, because in an interview they might make a, a poor comment, Oh, so this is your idea. What am I supposed to say? No, this is not my idea. This is Jacques' idea. What am I supposed to say that over and over and over again so that credit establishment can always exist? I'm just talking information, information that I've learned, and it's information that Jacques learned too. He didn't just magically coalesce this information. And that apparently is a problem too. And that was a very insulting thing to think that I am in the position to want to be on a center stage, as Jacques actually put it, uh, and if anyone actually knew me personally, you know that that is the complete opposite of everything I've ever intended. As an aside, I initially stated when I first heard Jock's tirade, I said, okay, if they're not happy with what I'm stating, then I'm going to let them be their own spokesman. This is why I announced when I first heard Jock's grievances that I was stepping down as a official spokesman because if, well, first of all, I've been exhausted by it anyway and I had been intending to do it for quite a while and I'd made those announcements periodically in different platforms, on different platforms. So that really shouldn't have come as that much of a surprise. But as of now, obviously, I'm retracting that and I, I as the initiator, as I have been, unfortunately can't take any, any pullback at this stage because of what has to happen now with restructuring, which I'll get to in a moment. So it's a multiple insult to me because they obviously don't even regard uh, my entity anymore. It's, I'm, there's, now I'm just another, another obstacle, and now they're inventing reasons as to why, so they can preserve their establishment. And that's the third point. This is about establishment preservation of ego and monetary relationships. And all three of those points disappoint me greatly. I don't know what else to say. They're going to continue. I wish them the best. The door is always open for them to come back, even though I strongly doubt that. I will continue to promote the ideas of the Venus Project one way or another. It doesn't have to have the name the Venus Project. It's, these, are, these are arbitrary attributes. I'm sorry to say, uh, 
if you live in a world where you identify any ideology with an individual or organization and you refuse to develop beyond that, that's a very detrimental state of mind, non-progressive. Um, I'm curious to see, frankly, what the Venus Project does on its own. There's no competition here. There's no such thing. Uh, there are similar goals. But the Zeitgeist Movement isn't going to stop. It's going to move forward. And this basically brings me to the restructuring issues that are really the most important points here. Um, one thing that has been dominant with the movement, and that's been the blind respect the Venus Project's wish to not have any third-party interference. And what that means is that I have kind of, uh, kind of a lack of integrity, frankly, kind of sided with them with the idea that no other organization can really be involved unless they accept 100% everything that the Venus Project states. I'm no longer uh, interested in doing that. We have to start bridging uh, different groups uh, with different angles for different purposes. For example, we're, you know, one way or another, we're heading down a slippery slope to economic crises. I was looking at the cover of, of the Times, you know, showing the absolute debt of America and the huge problems that are manifesting from that, and it's about to hit capitulation, which God knows what the ramifications will be once once the hammer falls and the, you know, the chickens come home to roost for America, not to mention the U.S. dollar and everything that's going to carry over with all the problems that will arise on top of all the other ecological and social issues that are already dominant. So, But anyway, that's for another conversation. But these issues need, they, there needs to be help for people. We have to do something to help people on a basic level. And that also, you know, that, that's also just a wonderful thing in and of itself and gives more credibility to the movement as a larger order institution. We have to start working on multiple levels, in other words. Uh, the Zeitgeist Media Festival is also going to be a global food drive, by the way. This is something that was brought up by a friend of mine, a brilliant idea. He works a food drive. So what we're going to do, and this you know, it's just an example of many different projects, since it's a resource as opposed to money, the food drive is a tremendously good idea. And when people come to, say, the L.A. event, granted, these are at-cost events, but if they do choose to bring food, they get a discounted ticket price. And that, I think that's a great motivation. And I want to incorporate everyone across the world that's going to engage the media festival to do this as well. Global food drive. Many other issues as far as helping the community time banks, doing things to start to bridge those, uh, excuse me, doing things that basically there's so, people that are suffering monetarily uh, that can help them gain resources that they need through non-monetary means, which of course is important and in line with what we do. If a time bank was able to manifest large enough, while it's going to meet and help people, meet people's needs, help them that are suffering in the economic you know, issue. I mean, there's there's 84,000 homeless people, uh, if I remember correctly, in Los Angeles alone. There's so many people starving right now in Los Angeles, which is just amazing when you look at how wealthy the environment actually is and how many resources are around. But we can create a way for people to get their needs met, but to also operate to dissipate the system. Because with the time bank, you're actually not using the circulation of money. You're using simply the barter of, of services. And that's a very interesting, effective thing that kind of hits two birds with one stone. As everyone knows, we don't advocate collapse, but we see it coming. And on one way or another, it's going to have a tipping point, and everyone's going to have to figure out what side they want to be on, to preserve the current system or to really work to get a new system in place as fast as possible. So other organizations, there are many of them out there that I've been in contact with over the years, that identify with us on a certain level, but they're not necessarily willing to go the full length. I've had great conversations with John McMurtry, who actually agrees that a moneyless society is a, is a very, very interesting prospect and possible. But he says, you know, you, we have to start to do some reform, though, and in the meantime, because of the goal is so distant, it's going to take reform processes, which I agree with. And I've always thought uh, kind of silently while I was adhering to the sort of all or nothing issue of, of the Venus Project. Uh, so those, those inhibitions are now gone. Working on multiple levels is very important, from engaging the community, providing resources, fund drives, closed drives, to also beginning to engage other institutions that have done great work in sustainable agriculture, uh, open source technology. Uh, there's all sorts of wonderful institutions out there that are not necessarily looking for the social system we are, but they have the components there. And it's time for us to bring all of this together. 
I'm tired of the separation. It really pains me to see what is nothing more than a, a temper tantrum of ego coming from the Venus Project. Uh, so they can override and just make sure their name and their, quote, legacy, their ideas promulgating everything and having it all come back to them because evidently they have the mystery information that no one else does and you can't possibly operate without the Venus Project if you want to reference a resource-based economy. And as I stated in other forum posts, and by the way, I apologize for this slight tangent, uh, I've listened to Jacques for tens and tens of hours of so many hours of recordings and I go through it and I have gone through it many times and notebooks and notebooks and if there's some mystery attribute that I haven't been told when really I hear him repeat himself constantly uh, I'm perplexed I'm confused and uh, frankly there isn't uh, some mystery there isn't some infamous schematic that uh, is hidden away that has the secrets to a resource-based economy I even question whether they have any blueprints at all when it comes to the actual technicals because of all the times I've asked about specifics. Granted, brilliant ideas of invention, many different ideas that are in, in isolation that regard efficiency, but the train of thought doesn't change. It doesn't take just the mind of Jacques or anyone to move this forward. I am going to start a nonprofit. I haven't developed a name for this yet, but it's been a nonprofit based on a very isolated attribute of our work with the Zeitgeist Movement. Let me restate, the Zeitgeist Movement is about world unification towards a common goal, a resource-based economy, a ground-up approach to technically satisfying the needs of the human population, and all of the science that goes around with this that has developed throughout the years that basically create our scientific reality and there's no this is no invention of anybody again by the way this is simply a natural culmination of information and slowly inching out of all the superstitious stuff that has permeated us for so long <coughs> and getting into a frame of mind that is actually progressive and based on a physical reference on physical reality that is the zeitgeist movement's overarching goal but this other nonprofit, well, the only nonprofit, the Zeitgeist Movement is a non-entity. It's, uh, it's a global reference organization. I do have the trademark on it because we have all of these people out there trying to abuse and attack and infiltrate and hurt us. But uh, my trademark ownership of that has no relationship to anything other than the fact that if someone takes our, takes our name and tries to abuse it or paint false pictures, such as what happened in Germany where they said uh, there was some Nazi night zeitgeist some group that claim to be Nazis using the Zeitgeist Movement name and this social network. These things sadly have to be protected against. And as I stated before, the bigger we grow, which is inevitable, the bigger the attacks will come. Um, as a brief aside, please remember what we're advocating and how difficult it is for many people to, to deal with it. In fact, if anyone out there doesn't understand this, you can do searches for anything derogatory related to myself or the movement, and there's a whole subculture of people that apparently are so threatened by information in the movie, so threatened by stuff that is said by myself and even the Venus Project, that they're willing to spend exorbitant amounts of time trying to create disinformation and insulting videos and blogs and granted it's nothing different from anything that's relatively popular you can go into a grocery store and you have the national Enquirer. there's no difference at all and i've addressed these issues before it's called the circus but it does reveal a certain fear because it's a little more vehement than what you see in the general arena it's a subculture of people that are basically so terrified of something that they're willing to spend a substantial amount of time uh, working to insult and inflame and create division amongst groups or anything and try to demean. And this is a staple of what we can expect because it's only going to grow and get worse as this challenge to the world it continues to flourish where we, you know, in the advocation of an entirely new social system, what you're doing is you're challenging the identity of so many people and they will blinker things out in very complex ways in order to make it seem like their view of reality is actually viable. So anyway, I apologize for the digression. The issue with the nonprofits going to be established is going to hone in specifically on the technicals. It's an extension of the From Earth to Venus project. Now, I haven't talked about that in a while because we had a lot of, a lot of snags trying to get this going and programming. 
Uh, originally, Jacques was going to kind of head this. That was my intention when this was first uh, organized. And what From Earth to Venus is, is basically a manual reconstruction of the technicals of society. So the first thing we would do is we create a digital platform of the Earth. We could use Google API. Again, I stated this before, so I'll reiterate it for those that haven't heard of this. The original concept was to have a website with Google API programming where we begin to document all the resources on the planet. We begin to show it in visual form through layers in this programming. And then we begin to build infrastructure using the most advanced technology. It's all a virtual type of environment, but it's based on whatever information we can find, whatever information we can find, and we construct out of that. So this new nonprofit is literally this, this team of designers, structural engineers, interdisciplinary by all means, which will take the reins. These are true technicians. These aren't just free thinkers like myself. These are people that work in these areas, technically specific. Uh, the only component that's important is that we don't worry about the current state of affairs, at least not for this project, at least not initially. We approach it by doing a ground-up revision as though the planet had never been populated, as though there was nothing ever here before. And of course, that's the train of thought that's used in Project Earth, uh, the third part of Zeitgeist moving forward, which presents the reasoning clearly for a resource-based economy. Um, this is very, very powerful if you think about it. If we get a team of people that are really able to do this and make it presentable and truly as technically viable as possible, real scale issues. Uh, we build digital constructions, full models of, say, North America, scaled, obviously, or anything, South America, the continent of Africa. We isolate resources. We show where the geothermal plants would be best suited based on what we understand, where the highest level of wind farm technology can be harnessed. And you take the entire approach of proximity, strategic design, all the things I've talked about. For example, the TEDx talk goes through a different train of thought that I thought was very important, strategic design, strategic allocation, dynamic equilibrium. There's other components such as proximity. Uh, all of these logical attributes of what it means to make a sustainable and conservative true economy uh, could manifest itself through this new institution, which, again, is the zeitgeist movement, but it's more isolated. It's only about the technicals. That's it. It's not about the sociological. It's not about how to construct prisons and deal with crime. Uh, this is a ground-up approach from a technical standpoint, just to show the world, which is on the verge of crisis, both ecologically and economically, yet that, yes, we do have the ability to do this, and the efficiency generated would be absolutely incredible. And this is what we show to the world. Through time, these technicians, these scientists, these engineers, these designers will create, recreate the entire planet in a presentable form, probably continent by continent. And then meetings, conferences will exist that actually show leaders the full technical outlay, that show institutions, even corporations, whatever. Show the community what's possible and the big hope uh, in tandem with the social movement globally, critical mass, global, sharing these ideas, is to get people to say, okay, maybe a leader might come along and say, okay, this is incredible. Our country is suffering. Doesn't matter with the monetary system. We're going to do this one way or another. And there you have your in. Again, it's very similar to Jacques' idea of the city system as as initial starting point from his Larry King interview a long time ago, where there's a membership kind of thing. We're, we're not advocating that, where the city systems can be put in place because they're so efficient. But we're going to extend this to the entire whole of infrastructure based on the region and the landscape and everything else. Because obviously a circular city can't be everywhere. Not everything can fit the circular design. This is, I think, a tremendous project. And it's going to take probably, in the long run, some type of funding. I'm not really starting the nonprofit because of a funding purpose, though, at all. And it probably won't have any donations until it's absolutely necessary. It's really there to give it a professional appearance and also to have discounts because it's a nonprofit in the event that a hotel was to be rented out to show this new global view to show an efficient economy based on ground up, a ground up technical approach. Uh, there's many perks to that as far as having a nonprofit. It's not just the ability to take donations, and that's not what this is about at all. So that's a very uh, important issue. I've also alluded to that a few times. I think I alluded to that in London. I jokingly said uh, that we could have a Z20, <laughs> a true economic group. That's not economic based on monetary movement. It's not banks meeting to decide the fate of humanity. It's scientists that actually understand what it means to grow food and to produce energy and have 
the latest developments on the tip of their tongue. And this extends itself to many other organizations. Again, the Buckminster Fuller Foundation is a great uh, existing foundation that I've, we have actually grown some contacts with, uh, which we hope to push forward with and just to, to share these ideas. It's all about sharing ideas now. The chapters, of course, are still critically important. At the end of the day, all the technicals become moot if there isn't a group of people to appreciate it. And with respect to the Venus Project, this is where they really don't understand what they had going and the unprecedented nature of what had manifested here. So let's see, what else do I have? Zeitgeist Day, Zeitgeist Media Festival as an annual day, and of course this new technical arrangement of interdisciplinary scientists, which could also be a third annual event, if not paired in with Zeitgeist Day itself. Each one of these social communal projects has a very legitimate basis and a different angle uh, of approach. And I think that's very important. We have to hit the community from all sides. I want everyone out there to give some thought, and I'm probably going to post a forum thread on this, of other institutions that you feel are important in whatever way that would be related to the ultimate goal of a resource-based economy and all the efficiency notions that we've talked about. Uh, I can think of a lot off the top of my head, but I'm, I'm not going to ramble on them. But it's time to start bridging. Now, we can't lose focus, though, and that's really important. The direction is to get society on, on pace with understanding what a non-monetary-based system and its benefits would be and to really show that the failure of society is because of these incredibly inefficient practices oriented around the monetary structure and everything that reinforces it. If we can get those points across by using intermediate steps, having other institutions that come forward that can be part of our event days, if we can just bridge all of this, we can really persevere at a global community that can actually have an effect. But everyone out there has to get some tough skin because uh, the attacks aren't going to stop. Whatever tensions with the Venus Project that they've created, by the way, I doubt that's going to stop. I know that they have requested a lot of things to be removed from our materials, mainly their photographs. There's very little legal basis they have for a lot of those issues with stuff that's already in existence. But I'm going to do my due diligence. There's there up, an update to our PDF and the orientation video is pending. I've been meaning to do that for a while, actually, because there's so much more information that needs to be pointed out that wasn't in those original documents. I will say, as a, in a cordial way, in a way of just sheer respect once again, that if anyone out there wants to join the Venus Project as an institution, and their whatever they intend to do as far as, quote, activism, they are open to it. So this is the deciding point for everyone out there to figure out not what side you're on, but which direction you choose to go. Because as far as I'm concerned, the Venus Project needs to continue moving forward. They need to continue the work that they do, even though, unfortunately, it's a bit narrowly defined. And they've kind of proven that. And, and it really answers the question with all of this, why no one has really supported them for 30 years. Why I asked Jacques when I first met him, like, where are, your, where are the people that, you know, the scientists under your wing, where are those that... Have, must have come and visited you and support you, and uh, the answer has now become quite clear. They, they seem to have a problem with working with others, as unfortunate as that is. The Singularity Institute, Buckminster Fuller Foundation, whole list of them. I'm going to start a forum thread for that. I'm a bit tired and uh, exhausted on multiple levels. I know I sound like a broken record. I say that, but I really did want to pull back and take a break and with my you know removal as this sort of forefront spokesman unfortunately now that that's that's off the table because of everything that needs to be developed a meeting will be happening soon with major coordinators well the international coordinators remember for all those in the movement that this is a reverse hierarchy so if anyone in the sub chapters i say sub chapters mean that they're lower oriented chapters lower in the sense that they're smaller and they're regional so if you're in a local town or if you're a city chapter Begin to converse amongst yourselves about, of course, not we're not dismissing this direction. Please don't understand. This is still a pursuit to a resource-based economic structure not based on money, but the intelligent management of the Earth's resources. There's no denying that. That is where the logic resides. And the Venus Project has nothing to say about that because they didn't, they didn't invent logic. Please come up with ideas and funnel that information to your chapter coordinators. And then in the next level of meetings, as you know, it's a reverse hierarchy. Everyone moves upward. And then by the time we get to the international meetings, I'd love to see ideas about 
new bridges being made, new ideas to help society. While we're not about to become some open charity and, and our mission, there's no reason why we can't work with resources to help ourselves and others and to really begin a communal type of environment. So I'm going to leave it at that. I know it's not uh, quite the end of the program, but I think I've said everything I need to, and I think everyone out there, again, just needs to take some time, consider what you value is important. I'm going to be here. The core players of this movement have all stated they're not going anywhere. And from the basic feedback that I've gotten, I, I don't see much changing as far as our infrastructure, as far as our membership, as far as our chapters. Again, this is not about me. This is not about anything but the move towards a new society. This is, not, this is a community-driven effort. If the community no longer wants the Zeitgeist Movement, then the Zeitgeist Movement doesn't exist. But I, I think that's not going to happen, frankly. I see tremendous prospects. I see this as a beginning, perhaps. I see nothing but positivity for any thoughts of negativity simply has no place. And you can use that philosophy for just about everything that you look at. And I wish you all well. And next week, Federico will be back with his scheduled program, which was on a number of important issues I thought were quite valid, in fact, quite quite valuable in his analyses. He's a great speaker, a great thinker. And this rotation will continue with different speakers. I'm trying to get Cliff from the Canadian chapter to do the next show after that. And then this rotation will continue. Ben McLeish will be back, and other coordinators will come back as well. I also, in my next rotation, will have John McMurtry on to discuss his ideas and the things that he advocates, a tremendously brilliant thinker when it comes to analysis of the current free market model. All right, everybody. It's going to be fine. Take care.